All right, today we're going to talk about statistics. All right, let's go through the calculations. So here's the famous table. Uh, I'm going to go through it in rows and columns. So just pay close attention, and if you need to listen to multiple times, please do so. Uh, so row one going across is the uh, status, disease status of the patient, positive or negative. Row two, left to right, is your test results positive, so true positives and false positives. Te uh, row three is going to be testing negative, is your false negatives and true negatives. Uh, column one is your test results, uh, so positive and negative. Uh, then column two, next over, is disease positive, so patients who have the disease, but those would be your true positives and your false negatives. Uh, column three is disease negative, so those are your false positives and true negatives. Uh, and row four and column four gives you the calculation results using each of those values. And we'll review that later. Uh, the important thing to know is that when the boards asks you for any of those sort of ultimate calculations, the positive or negative predictive values, the sensitivity or the specificity. You need only one of these rows or one of these columns to calculate those values. For example, for sensitivity, you need only column two. You need only your true positives and false negatives to calculate sensitivity. Um, for uh, specificity, you need only column three. Uh, which means your false positives and your true negatives. Those are the only values you need for specificity. For positive predictive value, you need only your uh, test positives, so your true positives and false positives. For negative predictive value, you need only your negative testers, so false negatives and true negatives. Uh, and then in the lower right-hand corner, you're going to have your total number of patients, um, uh, and those should be equal based on the rows and the columns. Um, the boards may use that and, and give you that number in order that you will have to sort of subtract from there to calculate uh, some of your other numbers on the table. So knowing this table cold is going to be absolutely key to answering these questions. And finally, the uh, mnemonic for the table will be that um, if you show, see that all the letters uh, relevant to the calculations are bolded, so uh, positive predictive value, proportional to prevalence, negative predictive value, not proportional to prevalence, uh, sensitivity, again, we'll review later, and specificity, we'll review later as well in terms of how those mnemonics work out. All right, now we'll go through the specific terminology uh, that you just saw in the table and how to look at each of those individually. All right, so sensitivity, uh, defined as your true positives divided by the sum of your true positives and your false negatives. All right? Sensitivity is what you look for in a good screening test, and so you are trying to rule out the presence of the disease in a patient who does not have it. All right? The idea being that you want the number of your false negatives to be as low as possible. And if you look at the denominator, a low false negative value will leave you with a number as close to one as possible, a fraction as close to one with your true positives over your true positives with the addition of a very small number of false negatives. Okay, again, a screening test should have a high sensitivity so that you can rule out the disease. All right, so sensitivity, snout, you're ruling out the disease with sensitivity. Okay, it's time for an OVC activity break. Here's a practice question that is very similar to something you might see on the boards. A recent study was conducted to determine whether children with moderate persistent asthma were more likely to have an exacerbation after exposure to cigarette smoke or water vapor. Five children had secondhand smoke blown at them by board review course instructors, N equals five. Another five children put their faces over a sterile humidifier device for two minutes, N equals five as well. Two children in each group complained of chest tightness and required bronchodilator treatment. 
p-value equals 0 0.5. The authors of the study concluded that there was no statistically significant difference between the effects of cigarette smoke and water vapor on children with asthma. Which of the following statements is the best explanation for the results of this study? A. The prevalence of asthma in this population is low, which led to an inaccurately high positive predictive value. B. The water vapor was likely contaminated with allergenic substances. C. The sample size increased the likelihood that there would be a higher proportion of subjects who suffered bronchospasm. D. The study was powered such that the authors failed to reject the null hypothesis when in fact there was a difference between the study groups. And the answer is D. The study was powered such that the authors failed to reject the null hypothesis when in fact there was a difference between the study groups. This case is an example of a type 2 error. The study was not powered sufficiently in order to detect a difference between the study groups, the study populations, when in fact, had there been more subjects in each group, the authors would have detected a statistically significant difference and not have suffered the type 2 error. Okay, the last section in the statistics chapter is validity hierarchy. Right, as we mentioned previously, the validity hierarchy among study designs is essentially a uh, ladder uh, of relative authority or validity between the study designs. And it's important for you to know and understand why these different types of designs are more or less valid. Uh, and the boards will ask you to differentiate between them in terms of the definition, as well as to know which test is the best one to choose uh, given the population they are offering. So the highest validity is going to be a systematic review with or without a meta-analysis, then would be a randomized controlled trial, then a cohort study, then a case controlled study, and finally just a case study or case series. And now we'll talk about each of those individually. 